Hi, this is Chris Peters for the Hampton History Museum, and today we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the economy of colonial Virginia. The items that you see on the table in front of me and the artifacts in the case next to me are good representations of the trade going back and forth between England and Virginia throughout most of the colonial period. It all starts with tobacco, which is this product on the end of the table here. In one of my other videos, I discussed tobacco cultivation. By the 16 teens and 20s, tobacco had become the foundation of Virginia's colonial economy, and almost every Englishman coming to this area did so with the hopes of growing tobacco, which could be shipped back to England and sold on the European market. Now, tobacco became the foundation of the economy and was certainly the largest product by volume being sent back to England, but it was not the only one. In addition to the agricultural products here, you had a lot of natural resources available as well. One of the more valuable ones was animal furs. And I have a beaver pelt on the table here. Any of the fur-bearing animals across North America could be used for clothing production back in Europe. The thicker the fur, the more valuable the animal would be. So animals like beavers, otters, and muskrats that lived in the water demanded a higher price. You also have timber products. So I have a cypress board on the table here. Almost all of the woods that were available in Virginia could be shipped back to England where they were used for the production of all kinds of goods, from furniture and boxes to gun stocks, the production of homes, and even building ships. Whether it was a softwood or a hardwood, there was some use for it back in England, and timber was in high demand. You also have timber products, and that would include things like soap. Now, soap isn't actually made from wood, it is made from wood byproducts. If you take wood ash, especially hardwood ash, which is rich in potassium, and you filter water through it, you end up with a substance called lye, which is nothing more than potassium-rich water. If you combine that lye with animal fat, that is how you make soap. Now, they weren't actually making the soap here in Virginia, they were producing the ash. They would burn the wood down, pack the ash into barrels, and ship it back to England where it would be used to make soap. You also had tree sap. What I'm holding here is a chunk of pine sap or pine pitch, and this is collected from the outside of the pine trees. It'll seep right out through the bark. You could collect this from a live pine tree, or after you'd cut the tree down, it would seep out as the wood dried. Either way, once you've collected the sap, you would put it into a large pot, and you would start boiling it. Once it starts to boil, all of the debris that's in that sap is going to float up to the top. And this would include stuff like dead bugs, tree bark, pine needles, pieces of leaves, or dirt. Any of the impurities that are stuck in that sap are going to rise up to the surface where they can be skimmed off with a stick. And then you've got a purified product that can be shipped back to England. Now once it was back in England, they would melt this stuff back down again and pour it as a liquid into wooden or leather containers, such as mugs or canteens. They would coat the inside of those containers with this to make them waterproof. This was also used as a water sealant on homes. You would use it for sealing up gaps around windows or door frames to help keep cold weather and rain out. So wood, wood products, wood byproducts, animal furs, and tobacco are going to be the bulk of the products coming out of Virginia, along with a handful of others. If you're a tobacco farmer living in Virginia, you spend most of your time focused on the tobacco production. Tobacco takes a lot of work to cultivate. When you're not focused on the tobacco, you're going to be harvesting wood and wood products, or you're going to be trading with the Powhatan Indians to get animal furs. These goods are shipped to England, where they're sold on the European market, and living in Virginia, if you want to have household items for daily use, you have to buy those from a European company. Now, the English government realized that these items could only be purchased from the people manufacturing them back in England, so they made sure that you bought these from an English company. If you lived in Virginia and you got caught trading in French, Spanish, Dutch, or goods from any other country in Europe, you could actually get in trouble for that. So the items on this side of the table would, by law, have to come from England. And that includes just about everything that you need for daily life, from drinking mugs to the ceramic pipes that are used for smoking the tobacco that you grow. You grow the tobacco here, 
if you want to smoke it, you have to get a pipe from an English company. Candlesticks made out of brass or pewter and other metal wares like pewter spoons or plates, these were also coming from England. If you want to be able to eat off of good metal or ceramic ware and be able to light your home, you have to buy candlesticks and flatware. Asian ceramics demanded a very high price in Virginia because these goods came through other countries to get to England before they were transported to Virginia, so those very long supply lines meant that these were quite valuable here. And then even glass bottles. If you wanted to have a way to bottle any of the wine, beer, or other liquids that you were producing on your farm, you had to have bottles to store them in. So all of these goods that were needed for daily life in Virginia had to come from an English company, and they were paid for with the goods that you were sending back to England. And the artifacts in the case next to me reflect that. We have good examples of European ceramics, especially English ones, glass bottles, and Asian porcelain. Along with other uh, goods like brass candlesticks, there's a good example of a brass candlestick right behind me, and pewterware. So all of these goods coming out of England are going to be purchased by the farmers living here in Virginia. There's a lot more to talk about with the colonial economy, but we're going to keep it simple for today. So thanks for joining us, and I hope to see you again.